On this episode of WTF, we're gonna show you how to make a deliciously scoopable plant-based oat and coconut ice cream. Hey, this is Chef Scott. And Janie, and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. So remember to subscribe and also stick around for our weekly giveaway. Now, this week we are showing you how to make two different types of plant-based ice creams. Scott, this has been a very commonly requested recipe. Um, and I think when we started tackling the idea, we bought some mm -hmm. at the store and we tested them. And I think what we found was that um, a lot of them just didn't quite have that texture that we were looking for from ice cream. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what are the challenges of making a truly great plant-based ice cream? So when you remove milk and cream and all dairy products from it, uh, eggs as well, you're losing a lot of fat, a lot of natural emulsifiers, mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of things that are going to be those building blocks to making a cream that can be frozen and not icy. Yes. So we had to find different things with our wonderful ingredients that then we can add them and make a mixture that's going to churn and scoop, uh, scoop being a big one, mm -hmm. uh, perfectly. And we can make an ice cream that's almost indistinguishable from like a great dairy-based ice cream to just a great ice cream. Yeah, and what did you find was really different about um, the technique behind how you make that base and, and you know how exactly you achieve that texture? So I think the base is actually easier to make uh, a plant-based ice cream than okay. it is, you know, having to make, uh, which, which we actually did an entire episode recently on ice creams, mm -hmm. uh, where you know sometimes you have to take those eggs and make sure you don't overcook the eggs and whatnot. This, I could just put everything into a pot, blend it up, heat it to a certain temperature, which is just about simmer. You can bring it to a boil, mm -hmm. and then blend it again until it's cooled and churn it. And then I don't have to worry about uh, you know overcooking the eggs or not cooking them enough or, or all these things that factor in. I can just blend it up and heat it. Okay, great. And we did make two ty different types of ice creams for this episode, one that's coconut based, one that's oat based. Which one are we demoing and are they any different for people who are viewing? They are different. Mm -hmm. The coconut milk powder we use has about 45% fat mm -hmm. content in the powder itself. That lends to, you know, you have to change the fat ratio so you're not ending up with too, too much fat. That's going to give you a different texture, different mouthfeel. So we have two recipes. They run the same method, but they're just slightly, you know, different variants. Uh, one will have less, uh, you know, neutral flavored oil. One will have more. The coconut one we are not showing today, but we're going to show the oat uh, milk ice cream today which is very similar, but we're going to taste both of them. Yeah, so if you want to check out the coconut recipe, link in the description below. All right, let's jump right into the demo here because we love oat milk. We've done so much with this, so I'm excited to see that change into ice cream. Sure, so we're going to start with our oat milk. Mm -hmm. And this is just our oat milk recipe that we use. And uh, what percentage is that? This is actually 5%. We mm -hmm. were toying around with 10. We were toying around with 7.5. But if people are making the normal oat milk, I wanted to kind of stick with this. Okay. So we're not you know, having to have make a special one just for this. That adds to the recipe. Right. But we found that adding a little bit extra fat and a little bit extra of the emulsifier, we're getting the same texture without having to you know, add on and, and make the recipe too difficult or okay. too time consuming. Sure. Right? So that's the main thing. We want our oat milk, which doesn't have uh, any fat emulsified into it. It's just oats, water, and a little bit of amylase. And you can find all of that out. Links in the description below to that episode where we talk about that. Mm -hmm. So we have sugar here. And then we have an ingredient called uh, glucose powder DE42. And DE42 is a very uh, lightly sweet glucose powder. So about 60% as sweet as uh, sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, but what this does is it, it gives you the ability to add more sugar, which makes things more scoopable mm -hmm. without having to add extra sweetness. Okay. So that way we're not making this like unbelievably sweet, which a lot of ice creams we find are, mm -hmm. but this will allow it to be scoopable and, uh, you know, very palatable. So I'm just going to add that directly in. And also, yeah. And if you are uh, looking at glucose powder online to get it, you it does in this case have to be the DE42. So we also carry other types of glucose, 
but they're not the same. Yes, yeah. and, and there's different numbers and different ones. This is the one you want because this is uh, the you know the amount of sweetness that you want. Mm -hmm. To add to this, just a little bit of salt that we have here. So we find the salt is going to bring out a lot of the flavor in the vanilla, which I just added there, and those are our grade A uh, Madagascar vanilla beans. Mm -hmm. This ingredient is very important to this. So this is uh, monoamine diglyceride flakes. We tried a bunch of different uh, types of emulsifiers, but we found that the monoamine diglyceride flakes really holds on to the uh, unrefined or the refined oil that we have in here, mm -hmm. and it makes just a creamier overall recipe. I mean, you tried a bunch of them, yep. uh, and this definitely works better than any of the other ones that we found. So I just add that directly into my dry, mm -hmm. and then we have perfect gelato. We tried all of our ingredients as well for this, mm -hmm. and we find that the perfect gelato gives just a little extra creaminess. This has a little bit of locust bean gum in it. Yep. So that locust bean gum adds to the creaminess. We're just trying to stack on all these things to make this the best that we possibly can. So I mix these all together, these dry ingredients, and... Yeah, so it sounds like what we're doing is trying to make up for the lack of natural fat by adding ingredients that are going to kind of mimic the fat properties. Well, we have fat here that we're going okay. to add, but this is difficult to emulsify directly mm. into to oat milk, then go through a churning and a heating without it just completely separating. Mm -hmm. And if it separates, we get a very, like, slick, greasy mouthfeel, right. and that's not what we want. We want it to be creamy. But yes, uh, there's other things, obviously, the... Uh, the perfect gelato will help cover up any ice crystals. I mean, this is basically water and oats. Mm -hmm. So we want to do all those things to prevent any issues. So I'm going to put my uh, stick blender directly in here and then sprinkle in my mixture here. And one thing that we talk a lot about is the importance of dispersion. Can you talk about that here? You know, like if someone's like, ah, I don't have one of these, can I just whisk it? Uh, I wouldn't whisk it. Even if you do dry mix it with the sugar, which is going to help prevent any like clumping, mm -hmm. I would suggest putting it into a blender, just a regular stand blender or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to just put it in there because what if you do get a clump and then someone that you serve it to gets that clump? Right. Uh, on top of not getting the properties of whatever was clumped up, right? Mm -hmm. So then I'm gonna emulsify in my fat. You don't have to worry about this too much at this point. You wanna just get it in there so it's kind of emulsified. Mm -hmm. uh, once those ingredients get activated, it's gonna really start to bring this in. And then once it starts to cool, you're just gonna buzz it once or twice just to make sure, you know, as it's cooling, make sure that it's emulsified. <laughs> is it until we heat it. So at this point, we've made our base. It just needs to be heated and then cooled and we're ready to make our ice cream. Okay, and both mono and diglyceride flakes and perfect gelato are ingredients that require heating. Mm -hmm. um, what temperature should people be heating this mixture up to? This entire mixture is gonna come up, I've, I'll just say, bring it up to a boil. That's, gonna, that's where you know everything's gonna be completely hydrated. Mono diglyceride flakes is 140 degrees. The perfect gelato is uh, around 180 degrees, but if we just bring it up to a boil, we know it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. It's not going to scorch to the bottom unless you're really, you know, giving it a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. Use a heavy bottom pot and it's going to be perfect. Use a heavy bottom pot for everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this is going to be great once it comes up to a boil. Then I'm just going to blend it one more time and we can uh, get it in the churn. And you'll see all of that right about now. And we're just about ready to taste test these delicious ice creams. But first, I want to talk about this week's giveaway, which will be all the ingredients that you see here today in order to start your plant-based ice cream journey. In order to enter the win, just leave in the comments below another common issue in your kitchen that you would like us to test and find a great solution for. Now, Scott, you know, while we're kind of waiting for the ice cream to come up to temp a little bit, um, when we have the finished base, what are, you know, like, What's the process for turning it into this ice cream? Sure, so once you get this after it's boiled, uh, put it into something, I usually just take it and put it into a, uh, you know, like a bowl of ice and the water. That's the best thing. Give it a stir. It will start to gel slightly. That's from the ingredients that we added to it. That's mm -hmm. perfectly fine. 
Uh, you may see it slightly separate, and that's where we want to emulsify. Just put a, a stick blender, or you can put the entire thing into a, a, a stand blender and just blend it up. You're not going to hurt it. Mm -hmm. It's just going to bring it back together. Um, those emulsifiers in there are great, so they're just going to bring them right back together. And it'll stay, you know, nice and uh, creamy like this. And from here, I can then pour it into whatever churn you have. It's going to work in any of them. So whether you're using something like a, a condenser like this, or you have uh, hopefully not a hand crank one or you know something mm -hmm. that you have in your home, it'll work uh, and it'll be nice and creamy. It may take a little bit longer to completely churn mm -hmm. from what I found than a, a dairy based ice cream, but it at the end it's a it's a really great ice cream. Yeah. And of course we've been offering these base recipes for ice cream, in this case vanilla. Um, someone might want to experiment with their favorite flavors. Mm -hmm. What are some of the common issues you see as people are working on plant-based ice cream recipes that the viewers can watch out for? So people want to take these and, and turn them into other things. That's great. That's what these recipes are kind of built for. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, if you're going to add melted chocolate to it and mix it in there, you're adding more fat and more fat will make it a little softer after it's frozen. Mm -hmm. Maybe that works for you. Maybe you add too much and it's not even getting to the point where you can scoop it. Mm -hmm. So all those things are going to factor in. Sometimes people want to make it into strawberry ice cream and mm -hmm. they use a, a strawberry syrup, which is basically water and a lot of sugar. More water and more sugar are going to change the recipe. So it's going to be about, you know, make it once, see how it is. Or if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, you know, remove a little bit of water, add in the syrup do those types of things, or re remove a little bit of the oat milk or the water in the coconut uh, to just change it up a little bit so that you can then make this new flavor without having to just make it and it not work. Yeah, and for people who um, want other types of nut milks besides oat milk, can they do this, the same exact recipe with, let's say, a soy milk or a barley milk or yes. some kind of other milk? Great question. Mm -hmm. So the oat milk kind of stands on its own, it's water, and the oat milk powder, mm -hmm. so you get a certain amount of basically coconut milk. I'm sorry, coconut milk powder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you get that. But if you want to take this recipe, which is the uh, the oat milk, you can take out that oat milk and you can put in any flavored milk that you want, mm -hmm. because this is just oats and water. So anything that's going to be you know almond milk or soy milk or anything like that, you can mm -hmm. just take it out and replace it. We put barley milk in there. It's it works because it, it's made to work. Yeah, I would just add on to that. If you do do that, make sure you're not buying one um, that already has gums added to it, that preferably you're making your own um, so that you know exactly what's in there. Sure, mm -hmm. you could try that. It may mm -hmm. work, but if there's issues, it, it may be because yeah. there's you know, mm -hmm. something happening between the gums or it mm -hmm. just adds up to too much and you get a different mouthfeel. Yeah. All right, so I think, spoons. there you go. All right, I'll which one's which? Too. So the lighter is going to be the oat milk. Mm -hmm. Darn. Coconut milk. <laughs> <laughs> the lighter is the coconut milk, mm -hmm. and the, the one that looks more like a French vanilla is the oat milk. All right, let's start with the oat milk one because, you know, we just made the base yes, for it. Yes, let's do it. And I mean, just seeing how he's, this came right out of the freezer. Yeah. I scooped them earlier today and mm. kept them frozen as I throw it all over the table. <laughs> uh, but just the ability to get through without having to, like, cut it like a knife, yes. you know, and it hits the bottom of the table and clinks or clanks. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful ice cream. It's very, very creamy, very smooth. The vanilla flavor is very strong. It's got like a little oatiness, which I personally love, um, but it's also not too sweet, as we see, very, very scoopable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, it's a, this is a really nice ice cream. I double dipped. It was delicious. I, I'm trying to be <laughs> respectful of, uh, of the not dip, double well, dipping I just make rule. sure you don't eat that. All right. This is the coconut milk. Since and, <laughs> and you don't like coconut is one thing, right, Jane? Yes, I normally don't like coconut flavored things. Mm -hmm. So this does have a lot of coconut flavor. Mm -hmm. This may not be the best one to try and turn in or add something to unless it's like, you know, toasted almonds and some chocolate bits to make like an mm. almond joy. But uh, I definitely wouldn't try to turn this into a strawberry unless you really want coconut strawberry ice yeah. cream. So I love this ice cream. I mean, I've had it before, you know, today, but it's so good. I actually love the mouthfeel of this one. Mm -hmm. I think it's the fat in the coconut milk powder. Yeah, it's the difference between the two fats. The, the coconut fat is um, less refined mm. because it, it, you know, it solidifies at, at a different temperature. So when you're eating it, it's going to give you a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. So this one is a lot richer to me, like mm -hmm. more like a gelato taste yes. or 
what did we do? The frozen custard method, right? Yeah. When we did our ice cream primer. So yeah, this one I feel like is more like the American style. Yes. Yeah. So if you like like a really creamy, coconutty ice cream, I don't think it's going to get any better than this. No, I love it. Yeah, it's it's super good. Um, and give these recipes a go. As always, links in the description below. We'll link to some of the videos that talk about you know ice creams and D42. You can get all that information up on, up on the blog. And remember, comment and enter to win. So until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Scott. <laughs>